the path forward. Uh, talking about Naperville's economy, I'm Liz Spencer. Today I'm joined by Mayor Steve Cherico, Christine Jeffries from the Naperville Development Partnership, Katie Wood from the Downtown Naperville Alliance, and Kaylin Riswell from the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join. Join me and talk about this. I think it's on everybody's mind. So let's start with um, hearing from each one of you and finding out where do you think we are right now? Mayor, do you want to start us off or who wants to start? Sure, I'll start. Uh, well, th first of all, thanks for having us, Liz. Um, you know, I think uh, generally speaking, just as a, at a really high level, I think our city has done a great job of, of social distancing. And I think as a result of that, that uh, it's re been reflected in the number of cases that we've seen at Edward and uh, just in general in our, in our city. Um, we've, we've, I think, done a better job, but we have done a better job statistically than uh, the county, and we've done a better job than the state. And so um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, Naperville is getting ready to, uh, we've, we've seen stabilized numbers at our hospital, and, and case counts are starting to flatten out. So I think we're, we're going to be good to go on May. I'm, I'm very optimistic that that will be the case. That's good to hear. Christine? <laughs> So um, I agree. Uh, first of all, thank you, Liz, for, for putting this group together. Uh, I would agree with a lot of what the mayor said. I think we've been out ahead of it a little bit more than most, but we also have two big industries that have really kind of been whacked, um, that being the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. restaurants, and hotels. So the city of Naperville funds a, a Naperville Convention and Visitors Bureau, as well as the Dine Naperville, which is funded through the food and beverage tax. So it was really kind of pretty easy to get it up and going. And so I think the recovery going forward will be critical, but I also think how we've handled it during the past six weeks, eight weeks, I think has been really important. It's going to determine how well we launch when we all get back out. Excellent. Katie? I'll, I'll I'll jump in. Um, I think this has been Naperville. I mean, as, as tragic and everything that we have going on, I think it has highlighted Naperville at its finest. I've been overwhelmed by seeing the community come together. I'm sure you can agree to that, Mayor, just in the different initiatives. And we have such a small, a strong community that um, it's enabled us to be ahead of the curve, like you'd mentioned, Mayor. Um, I think from the downtown perspective, um, you know, these businesses are certainly uh, saddened by the, the closure. Um, they're very eager to reopen and get back. And I think um, I really admire what they're doing now to prepare for that, to get ready for the opening. Um, uh, I, I consider us in hibernation mode. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, if you, if you think of a bear hibernating, they come back renewed and stronger. And I really admire the businesses, what they're doing now to prepare for that opening. They're eager, they're ready. They miss the community, they miss their customers and they're working for their associates and we're ready to get back in the game. And like Katie said, not only do the restaurants miss the community, the, the community misses the businesses. We're missing all of the businesses. We're seeing, we live in such a society that's relationship driven, right? We want to go to our favorite restaurant because that's where we feel supported and we want to support our all of our businesses, small, medium and large size businesses. And I think what we've seen through all of this is businesses adapt, change what they're doing, simple things like the Zoom meeting. Um, we've, we've had to adapt and change. That being said, not all businesses can adapt and some businesses are slower on the uptake. So it definitely has been um, hard hit on our business community, but the spirit and the resolve to fight and come out of this stronger than ever is definitely there. Well, and let's talk a little bit about, you know, businesses are are closed and people are buying differently in that. I, I don't know if everybody understands the ripple effect of how this how, you know impacts, say, city revenues or not-for-profits. So let's start first with the city revenues and, and sales tax and that, um, you know, I think about car dealerships, Christine, because you're, you're always a huge supporter of the car, the car group. So let's talk a little bit about how those, you know, big industries and how sales tax impacts the city. Christine, you want to so, lead us off? Sure. Uh, car dealers are 30% of the city's sales tax revenue. Uh, the city of Naperville is, draws from probably one of the most diverse uh, financial pools, and, and the mayor can talk further about that. 
but about 30% of the sales tax. And the sales tax in the city of Naperville is actually a higher collection than property tax. And that's by design. We try and increase the retail sales tax. So it really does create that ripple effect as you go down the line. Again, it depends on how strongly we come back. So there's a lot of anticipation that while this first quarter uh, has been trouble going into the second quarter, the third quarter could rebound at such a level that it could actually end the year in a fairly decent position. But some of the other retailers, you know, in any, any tragedy like this, there's winners and losers, if you will, and certain businesses have done much better. However, there's also the whole social distancing. So while grocery stores, we'd all say, have been uh, doing very well, people are in shopping. If you look, the number of people in the store, most of these grocery stores really rely on having people filling the aisles and, and a lot of people in their shopping. And now it's very limited, the number of people in there. So while you might be waiting in line to get into a store, there's not a lot of people in there. So again, it's, uh, it's unprecedented. I know that term's been used a lot but even the retailers are trying to figure out what this will look like at the end of the day. Mayor, do you have anything you want to add on that? Sure. Um, we've done some preliminary estimates on, on how uh, the, this will affect the city's revenues and the budget. And uh, it's potentially going to be about an $18 million sort of hole. Um, that sounds big and, and it is big. But um, I, I have to tell you that Naperville financially is in such a great position right now. For the past five years, we've been planning for, you know, a bad, a rainy day, let's just call it. We have been saving money. Uh, we've in increased our cash reserves by $45 million. We have paid down $31 million in our debt. Um, we have uh, reinvested in our infrastructure. And so financially, we have a lot of levers to pull if we need to pull them to um, provide some assistance for the, the local uh, economy. And so um, I believe that uh, our city is gonna be in really, really good shape, uh, that the, the impact is gonna be real and it's gonna be serious, but we have the tools at this point to, uh, to deal with it. And uh, I am certainly gonna advocate that we do that. I think it's interesting um, that I think many businesses and, and people in general are going to come out of this feeling much like you know, parents and grandparents who came out of the depression where they're going to now plan ahead a little bit more for reserves and things like that for making sure that they're ready in case well, something like this happens yeah. again. And seriously, so we've been doing this as a yeah. city for the last five years during, you know, all this economic expansion. You know, we've been very fiscally conservative and saving our money and, you know, and preparing for these types of things. So we're, we're ahead of the game. And that's awesome. Kaylin, any thoughts from the chamber? Yeah, you mentioned nonprofits, and I thought that's like a really interesting um, segment and segue to go down here. Um, nonprofits are hit really hard for a lot of different reasons. One, people aren't spending as much, right? There's no fu the fundraisers are changed, and we're trying to figure out how to adapt fundraisers. Right, you um, can't have fundraisers right now. You can't, yeah. So how do to. you take something and make it virtual? Can you? Will you have the same impact? And so getting the money in is hard, but the chamber's a nonprofit as well. Mm -hmm. So when I'm looking at my budgeting, we already have a tight budget. So I have less to cut. I have less discretionary spending. So while well, other maybe larger or for-profit businesses can cut down on some discretionary spending, uh, not-for-profits are already really lean. So when we're looking at what can I cut to increase my cash flow, there's not as much fat there, so to say, um, to be able to trim down. So not-for-profits are trying to get creative and figure out what they can do to continue to reach their goals to help uh, people. But it's been very hard on all businesses, but not-profits are doing their best. And I think that's been uh, really challenging is how can you adapt and be creative to figure out ways to have fundraisers and continue to support your constituents. And some nonprofits are closed because they simply can't operate as well. Right, it's definitely a, a struggle. And some not-for-profits are providing such vital services too to keep that balance going. Um, 
we talked about businesses doing well, like the grocery store um, and, and pharmacies and that. Are those businesses, do we see them in Naperville? Um, what is, what's doing well? We are so service oriented that I feel like, though I think we're in a better position than not, I feel like service has really been hit. It's those that are not service oriented that have a little bit easier time. Yeah, well, some interesting things you wouldn't necessarily think of. Um, alarm detection services are doing really well okay. because they can go into businesses while people aren't working. Uh, construction, landscaping, people that are still considered as essential that can get out and now they can do that project in half the amount of time because there's less foot traffic or there's less people in the building. Um, realtors are still doing pretty well and they've had to adapt by doing virtual open houses and um, we've seen painters and other people do the same thing of where they're just adapting how they interact with people. But uh, yeah, the alarm detection services wasn't something that I would think of off the top of my head, but we've heard some pretty positive things from uh, security companies and people taking care of office buildings. You know, I, I, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. Um, we're pretty lucky. Naperville is pretty lucky. We have such a broad uh, uh, economic base here in our city with the college and the hospital, our you know, two largest school districts in the area, the um, 88 corridor, which is a whole different segment of, of industries. Uh, we've talked about our, our, car our car dealerships and the strength of that. And so when you look at all of them across the board, um, there's a lot of stability there. And much of that's due to the hard work of uh, NDP in, in trying to attract businesses that uh, fill gaps that we have within different industries and markets. So Neighborville has, uh, I think, done a really nice job of balancing uh, our business districts so that we, any one particular industry you know, isn't going to have such a major impact on it as it has done has in the past. Think think about the uh, internet uh, crash uh, back in the 2000s, the telecommunications and the effect it's had on on the jobs in Naperville and the and the economy. Uh, so we we have a much broader base of businesses now that uh, we can enjoy. And so you know, while there are some, as we said, winners and losers, overall, uh, we're gonna I think have a pretty stable uh, you know comeback. Katie, you have some thoughts? Yeah, I was, you know, I could certainly speak to downtown businesses that are doing well. So it echoes what Kaylin and the mayor indicated, you know, our home goods. So JC Licht, our paint store, is there's a lot of home projects going on. So they're doing a better job um, right now. Walgreens, places like that, even our pet food store are doing, you know, that's considered an essential business. But I think with all of it, you know, much to what the mayor said, something that really will help us rebuild as a community is to, really consider shopping and dining and staying in Naperville first, that that becomes people's first inclination, because I do think that's gonna be a key piece to us rebuilding out of this strong, is that people consider Naperville first with what they purchase and where they dine and what they do. I think that's gonna help us come out of it ahead of the gates. Or fast yeah. yeah. And I'd, I'd kind of like to jump in there. One of the things our, our restaurants adapted to really quickly was the curbside. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, you, it, it sort of gives a whole new meaning to uh, a pickup line, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now there's streams of cars, whether it's in the downtown or whether it's Granite City up in Freedom Commons. Um, we've, seen, we've seen the lines of cars coming to pick up while that is very promising. It, they're still operating well below their their normal margins, obviously, but it is keeping people employed. Not their whole teams, but it's keeping people employed. And again, kind of going back to what fuels, you know, the food and beverage tax helps fund uh, the SICA right. event. So mm -hmm. uh, special events, a lot of those are going to be canceled. So while there might be less revenues coming in, there might also be some, you know, fewer revenues going out but I do see how they can adapt. Our hotels are less fortunate. They're, they're really not able to put people in hotel rooms if they're not, they're not moving around. And then on the real estate side of it, not only do you have tenants, a lot of, most of the office have uh, made their rent payments, their lease payments for April. It's, it's actually been a pretty positive turnout, but retail, not so much. So retail is is more challenged, and then that ripple effect goes to the property owners, you know, mm -hmm. who still have to make their mortgage payments, and so it'll be it'll be a real 
challenge to see which ones get back on their feet and reopen. And that not only the small businesses, uh, such as downtown small businesses, but some of the major retailers that we know about there are all pulling down their lines of credit to sort of keep afloat. So until we really see the impact of the of the stimulus, and it's just now starting to hit bank accounts and and uh, the PPPs are starting to be paid out, that I think starting pretty much today, yesterday and today as we talked about, will will really influence the direction of how we respond. I also think it will be interesting to see how we respond once the order is lifted. And we can talk a little bit later about what that looks like. But there's so many businesses who are, I can just hold on, I can scrape by until the order is lifted. And business isn't going to go back to normal right away. And so it's like, if I can just hold on till May 1st, I can make all the money I used to make in May, this May, and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But then what happens in September when you don't hit May, June, and July um, projections? And so I think it's very interesting to see those programs and those federal stimulus money come in and see how long we'll be able to um, you know, keep that stop gap and how we can close it and get more back to normal, back onto hitting realistic budgets, realistic goals, and keep that steady, which I think the mayor is talking about, which is really important. The best thing we can do is just stay steady and increase gradually. Well, I think you make an interesting point that we are all trying to see how long this will last because we're looking at our bank account and going, gosh, May 1st, June 1st, how long can we hold out? And I think that's spurring some creativity where we might not be able to get our full money like the takeout group, but we might be able to do some Zoom shows like we're doing here. Let's talk a little bit about some creativity that we see that might, I think, is going to actually continue forward into when we get released a little bit, if you would. Um, what have we seen beyond the, the the takeout? And Katie looks like she's got an yeah. answer. Uh, well, I, I again, I back to my beginning comment. I mean, I think some of the retailers, and I'm again, I'm speaking to those downtown. I really admire some of the things they're doing, and there are things like Pino's Palette, yeah. a, a paint and art studio. She has virtual classes. She is allowing people to come and pick up paint kits, and then she's teaching that from home. And I think that's gone very well. I see our fitness studios doing the same thing. They're having virtual classes. They're keeping their clients engaged with that. Um, uh, you know, Naperville Running Company, they, you know, they can't have people come in to try their shoes on, but they have an online e-fitting thing that's gone very well. My son himself per purchased a pair of shoes using the e-fitting thing. And so they're trying, I, it's been neat to see these merchants trying to rethink, okay, what do I need to do now mm -hmm. um, to be ready for this? Um, you know, some of our salons downtown, there's a lot of those folks that are literally, you know, they're out of work right now. Mm -hmm. So they're doing online videos showing how to do different things, um, which I think is helping their clients. So those are just a few of the- I tried that and I missed. <laughs> yeah. Right, they say one, the, the, one of the hottest sellers are clippers and hair yeah. dye. Hair dye is yeah. now hard to find. So we're all past that yeah. time period. So right. that's great. Well, the other thing, I think the support from the city and uh, truly the reaction as quickly as the mayor did with, you know, everybody watches the governor's executive orders. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how many executive orders came out of the city of Naperville early on that really, uh, really kind of gave a spark to a lot of our restaurants and really kind of on the cutting edge of even helping the state make some of these decisions. So I know things like, you know, delaying paying on, on some of the food and beverage tax or, or helping them connect with some of the hospitality grants at the state or being able to sell online or sell uh, for pickup certain products that, that goods, they right. couldn't before. Those were so important to keeping our restaurants going. That's great. Right. And I think people didn't at first understand what the city was doing and why it was declaring itself a state of an emergency. I think everybody public wise might have had a little panic and then realized to get how much more control it gave the city to, to help us. You know, I'm wearing two hats here a little bit because as uh, owner of Great Western Flooring, uh, my daughter started a, a, a sort of a virtual platform where uh, live they can go through the selling process with people. Um, have them take a photo of their room and they then show the room scene with the new floor and mm -hmm. samples directly within two days. And so 
uh, this was opened up about two or three weeks ago, and the first sale came in virtual. And uh, the comment coming back from the buyer was, uh, this was a really simple, I mean, very, very easy, enjoyable process. I didn't have to have someone in my home, no pushy mm -hmm. sales. I only wish buying toilet paper was so easy. <laughs> And I'll be interested to know how that program continues. You know, is it it's much more convenient for me as a homeowner and I'm all over the place all the time to send photos and videos and I feel like this is going to be the new normal. So many things here at the city that we're doing today as a result of COVID-19 will uh, be used well beyond the crisis. Uh, it's just amazing yeah. the uh, innovation that's been forced upon everybody, every business, every organization, and including the city. But uh, in doing so, it's, it's, it's made us uh, better, more efficient, and a lot of the processes that we've now put in place will uh, be normal uh, operations going forward. Well, I think we're all finding out how easy it is to connect with people all over the place, just like we're doing now. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how um, hotels and airlines and those who have you know, really been you know, service to those who travel are impacted once we might figure out we like to go zooming more than we like to go flying, but I, it, one one will have to wait and wait and see. Um, I make a comment on that too. Sure. Uh, probably, if you look at now, while we've never seen anything like this before, if you were to look at that industry, probably the closest uh, similar event would be the 9/11, and at that time, uh, again with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, there was a complete pullback on airline travel. That was really the, you know, kind of the big kicker there. So uh, we found ourselves marketing on a, a drive to location capacity, but it does rebound. I think people are social mm -hmm. by nature. Uh, business likes to be done, maybe not with a handshake anymore. It might be a fist bump or an elbow bump, but people really are social. And I think you know, two weeks, everybody feels they could go two weeks with this. But I've talked to a lot of managers who have said, we're not giving up an inch of our office space because we have found working remotely is far more challenging. We lose a lot of the interaction and the creativity that we get in an office setting. So, you know, there will be, they're predicting, you know, some people will reduce their space and have more remote workers. There are others who just can't wait to get back into the office. I agree. I think, you know, as much as we've been working from home and it's been pretty well, it's hard to, I miss the, the natural interaction that I have with my staff and how much I, I learn things that, you know, is helpful for me to learn because I've just, you know, drifted by sports or something like that. Other thoughts from you guys on that? Just a somewhat aside, um, my husband sent me a quote that I thought was very interesting. We're not just working from home and, a, and this pandemic exists. We're living in through the pandemic and attempting to work at home. You know, the, the pandemic is here and we're doing the best we can to make ends meet. And like the mayor was saying, and innovate and come up with creative ways. But we're doing this because of the pandemic and it's not, we're just working from home and, and this is so. Things will be adjusted and we'll be creative, but uh, we are going to come out of this different and stronger, but not forget and, and appreciate the history that uh, we're living through and trying to work through. I know the settlement has been encouraging people to to keep a record of how they're feeling and what they're doing and to be able to share that with, with them so that we document this. And I, I think about this because I just read a bunch of journal entries from 1918 in, in the flu hmm. and how you can see yeah. a, uh, how people were restless, businesses were worried, you know, houses of worship were missing their parishioners and that. So it, 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 it'll it be interesting to see, you know, once we write all this down, how we can compare the two. Yeah, and we've been in talks with Neighbor Settlement to help them with this call for materials, mm -hmm. things, you know, they, they're looking for gloves and 95 masks, cloth masks, the signs that are on businesses and the sign in front of Edwards that says heroes work here. Mm -hmm. um, they're starting to collect all of that because again, we are living through history and it's interesting to see not just how the community reacts, but how the business community reacts as well. I agree, being a little history buff myself, I love all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> um, we have the stay at home order in place um, and I'm going to direct this to you, Mayor, first. So we're right now to April 30th. What do you think? Are we going to get extended? And if so, what does that mean? 
Well, I sure hope not. I mean, I think here's what I here's my kind of you uh, know I, I, I'm on the conference calls with the governor uh, twice a week and with uh, the mayors twice a week, and uh, of course I, I watch the same news coverage uh, with the president's press conferences that everybody else does. Um, and I think uh, from my point of view, I think we have to we do have to follow the data. And, and one thing we know right now is, is that as I said earlier, uh, Naperville has not been affected the same way Chicago has, uh, and um, some of the more rural parts of our state have not been affected as much as Naperville has. And so I don't know that it's going to be a one size fits all solution. I think that communities that have been able to manage this crisis um, uh, either better or it hasn't affected them as much um, should be able to come online faster than areas that are have been hit harder. So that's one thing. And then the second thing I think, uh, and, the, and the governor has, has uh, kind of alluded to this at this point, that uh, low transmission risk businesses uh, will and should start coming online first and soon. And uh, and then followed by, you know, higher risk businesses and higher risk businesses. And ultimately the highest risk businesses, which are sports stadiums and movie theaters and things like that, uh, likely will be last. And, uh, and so that will be something that uh, we'll have to deal with. But, but uh, a lot of these other businesses, and, and that would include likely retail and showrooms and things like that, that they can control uh, social distancing through some of the guidelines that we've now pretty much adopted with our grocery stores and and uh, the uh, hardware stores and things like that. Uh, those will be kept, I suspect, at least for a while until uh, a vaccine is found. But um, these types of businesses, I think, will op be opened up in an orderly fashion uh, as, as we can. And so both geographically, I think, we'll see some differences and then from different industries We'll see some differences, and uh, but I hope that that process begins. I believe it should begin, uh, and I will advocate for it to begin uh, May one. Katie, you're shaking your head down there a lot. Yeah, I you know uh, we're we're eager for that. You know, um, I think the the businesses will clearly follow the state mandated guidelines and our local guidelines, but. Um, I do believe that the downtown businesses are actively considering what do we need to do? How do we need to prepare? You know, do we buy, need to buy thermometers? Do we need to do, we need to do um, fittings by appointment only? Um, what does that look like? So they're trying to do their best to prepare for the, the opening, which we hope will be early May. And we're preparing for that too, just from a welcoming people back standpoint, there's a lot of ideas out there and we're, we're eager to have people back safely. And we're working with the city and, and uh, we've talked with the mayor and the TED department. It's very important that the city is issuing or processing building permits now and they are. So as we look to come out of this, what we want to see is activity. Um, we want to see, you know, projects going in the ground and not sort of tied up in, in paperwork. So it's very important that the city has been able to adapt to a lot of this electronic and, and uh, different methods of reviewing so that we can truly hit the ground running. And construction, you'll notice there's a lot of construction projects still going on out there that had permits. They can distance themselves. So really identifying, as the mayor pointed out, being able to identify types of industries that can that can come on strong without sort of bending the rules on, on social distancing. I think uh, those are the areas we should really be supporting and there is some of that still going on now. So there are certain industries that are very little impacted by this from the standpoint of having to lay off workers. So let's keep encouraging that. As far as the retailers, I think they need to see something a little bit different. Uh, there will be there will be more social distancing, more hand wash and, and those types of things. And I think that will be a permanent change. But I do think stores need to sort of get their vibrancy back. I, I, I don't see America staying literally six feet away from each other forever. So I think they want to come back together. Kaylin? Yeah, I agree with, with what everyone said. It's hopefully sooner rather than later, and we're doing our best we can to support businesses as to what that reopening looks like. A lot of the conversations are around staggering, right? Not just the staggering of reopening, what types of businesses, but what that looks like. Are you still a nine to five office? Or, you know, Liz, you come in on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and Christine, you're here Tuesday, Thursdays, or I work eight to four, and you work, you know, seven to two, or how are we 
able to adjust to stagger some things to help limit that contact. Contact should retail kind of rearrange their store so there's a little bit more space yeah. between people. What yeah, can and I you think do also to be proactive to do that? Uh, to add to that, uh, one of the things they've talked about was the, the support businesses. So the businesses that are needed to open up first to allow people to go back to work. For example, daycare. You know, people need to have child care if they're going to go back to work again. So they need to get those places open fairly quickly. And uh, so there's, it's, it's going to be a very complicated and sort of domino effect. But, uh, you know, I, I am confident that will. And, you know, again, we have to remember, and, and the governor continues to make this clear, that he's going to make, uh, let the data um lead him. And and I refer back to uh, Edward Hospital in Naperville, which is a, a leading indicator of what, how are we doing? And I can tell you since April 8th that the inpatient count for COVID-19 has been stable, right around 57. It goes up to 58, went as high as 60, as low as 54, but it's right around, to, uh, yesterday I was at 57. So uh, that's a very manageable number. We're at about 41% occupancy in our hospital. So we have plenty of capacity in the event that we have a surge, uh, but we've managed it and it, it appears to have leveled up locally. And so and they've predicted that the, uh, the peak will be within a few days. And so if that holds true, then the May 1st uh, deadline or the May 1st opening date, uh, the data would support that, uh, that we have now reached our peak. We should be seeing some downward pressure and we should be able to start to open back up without too much risk of, of uh, having a second peak. Well, I think, um, you know, from a not-for-profit point of view is that we need the economy to move a little bit so that people are back to work and have can start to pay their bills and replenish their savings accounts and pay down their credit card so that when not-for-profits push out for, you know, a Giving Tuesday or a, a pledge drive, that there's a little money to be able to go around as events and that are going to be different until we figured it all out. I mean, I have lots of ideas, so we can have that well, be on another program. <laughs> if you look at if you look at the number of businesses, um, for instance, I'll, I'll highlight our restaurants, the number of, of businesses that are helping first responders who are doing charitable acts, so many of our restaurants, people don't realize, are actually feeding the families of their employees who may have been furloughed mm -hmm. or laid off. There is so much giving behind the scenes from, even, even though their industry has been hit so hard, the fact that they continue that giving spirit is is amazing. So salute to them. Absolutely, you know, they have, I know many of restaurants that have benefited lots of people. So that I think is awesome. You know, when we think about, um, and we look at history again, uh, the 1918 um, flu, and then there was a, another resurgence in, in 1958. All of them had either V's or U recoveries. They had quicker recoveries, and this is kind of what we're talking about. How fast do we think this can can go? Do we are we optimistic for? And we've talked a little bit about it, but I want to kind of really zero in on it. Optimistic on a on a strong recovery, Mayor. You're you're shaking your head at me, so I'm going to start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, we've learned a lot in in, in terms of uh, certain protocols on human behavior, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, we'll be better prepared to when we do come back to um, prevent the spread. Uh, this particular virus uh, we are, we're finding uh, does have a higher uh, mortality rate than um, the you know, influenza A and B by a significant amount. Uh, and it has a, a transmission rate that's um, also fairly high. So uh, it's something that we shouldn't take, uh, we shouldn't get too um, complacent. Uh, but uh, I do believe that the things that we have put in place now in terms of uh, some of the procedures and, and processes to protect everybody uh, will allow us to, to, you know, bring back our economy and, and, and live more normal lives um, and have a, a manageable level of this infection within our, our country. And so um, we're not going to have a vaccine for another perhaps year. And, um, this country needs to get back to work well before that. So we need to figure out the way to, to live with it, much like we have lived with influenza A and B. Um, it's not gonna go away, it doesn't go away, we just have learned to live with it, uh, it within, our, within our communities. Christine, you had mentioned you were really optimistic for a strong third and fourth quarters. Yeah, we're still seeing a lot of the deals going through. There's a lot of uh, office leasing going on, industrial, uh, 
little less and obviously retail there's a little bit more of a hold but those projects that were in the pipeline and new projects in the office market were were pretty uh, positive about a robust coming back so those types of things have been able to continue throughout this process so it depends on how many people put their pencil down if you will during this COVID, and those people who kept going and i think you know everybody sort of set their pencil down maybe for two weeks they could get through this and now that we're going all the way through the end of april people have realized they need to pick up steam so i'm hoping that that the idea of a may 1st stays strong and then people will i mean Truthfully, I think people who were sitting around in yoga pants and, and eating five times a day are starting to think, wait a minute, I better get on that that online exercise class because I will be back out in the world soon. So it is a spark if we keep if we keep our eyes set on May first, and I truly hope that that's the case. Okay, I'll, Katie, I'll, I'll jump in. I you know I I am optimistic um, that we will re rebound strong. Um, I do think it's going to be a slow build out, if you will, um, just because of the new guidelines and social distancing and all the rest. Um, I, I, I do want to say that, that we may, I hate to, to say this, but it's true. I think we may see some businesses close. I, I, I hate to say that, but that's just, I think people should not be surprised by that. I hope it's few, um, but I do think we will see that. Um, I think some businesses may have been at that point already they were thinking of closing so there's multiple reasons business is closed um I, I think it's a reminder as i said before to shop and support naperville businesses as much as you can that's national and local if you if you want to buy a garment buy it in our store that keeps whether it's a national chain or a local boutique um it keeps them open um but but i but i am optimistic i think naperville has always had strong fundamentals um and um with strong city leadership um a strong team of individuals a, a strong core of businesses and many amenities that um i i'm i'm very um happy to be a resident of naperville and to work within the community i, I think we're going to do very well and i'll echo what katie said again not to be surprised we are hearing of businesses who have um, innovative and become creative and adapted very well. And we've also heard from businesses who haven't been able to do so due to um, lawyers who have files that are physical files and not everything's on the cloud. And there's other industries that are much harder to, to work from home. And um, even some restaurants and other businesses, we've heard of some businesses that may not come back um, and other businesses that when they come back, it will look very different, uh, but different isn't bad. We're adapting and we're learning and we're going to see what that is. And we look forward to supporting the business community and helping give them what they need. And I think that we will be able to rebound fast, not only like Katie and so many others mentioned, our sense of community and pride in our community, um, but simply by doing things like having this conversation, having this conversation and being transparent and talking to the community about what we see happening and continuing to support businesses, I think puts that bug in people's ear of, I need to support Naperville. I need to shop Naperville. I need to continue to get takeout and instead of buy my clothes online, pick up at the store. I think reminding people of all of these things that we should have been doing um, will help us rebound even faster. If I may, uh, Liz, just uh, from a municipal point of view on, on how, it's going to, how it's going to come back and how spending is going to happen. There's a couple of different philosophies amongst the mayors in the region. Uh, one set of uh, strategies is to cut back, you know, cut the budgets, stop all the capital improvement projects and reel it all in. Uh, I have a very contrarian point of view. Uh, I think this is a great time to uh, take advantage of uh, lower prices, better deals for uh, road construction and infrastructure investment. Uh, bonding is now at the lowest uh, interest rate that we may ever see. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us as a city to uh, get a lot of work done um, and get it done at a great value uh, and also very uh, minimal uh, uh, financial impact uh, and that has a side benefit of helping our local economy and so that uh, has a uh, domino effect so uh, i will advocate for a, a strong you know spending in our recovery uh, from the city standpoint because i think it's going to give us the taxpayers uh, a great uh, value i think the same thing will happen with the real estate industry i mean 
there's still a lot of money out there. There's still a lot of investment dollars, and interest rates are zero percent. I don't think we'll ever see a market like this, and I think that's kind of what's driving the number of closings and property sales that are still continuing even through this. So, it's. I agree with the mayor. I think the the time is perfect for coming out of this strong. Well, and I, th I think it also will um, show the public a little bit about the strong economic engine that Naperville has and, and what an important role the business community plays to not-for-profits to the residents. It's, it's a very strong role. So let's um, end this with closing thoughts. Who would like to jump in first? I'll go. All right. So one of the things I've talked to a lot of the stores about, um, those stores like Walmart or Costco that have sort of hard goods on one side and groceries on the other. What I'm hearing, people are coming in, they're going straight to whether it's the toilet paper, the cleaning supplies and that, but the, the hard goods side of the store is not getting much traffic. That tells me there's going to be a huge pent up demand, whether it's for your hairdresser, whether it's for uh, the patio set, the, the clothes, a lot of people are not shopping online because they're not going out. So I see, you know, Sephora and Ulta and all the people who have been waiting to get out there and do their shopping. I think they will come out. Hopefully they'll they'll come out safely. But what I'm hearing is people have been so focused on groceries and you know home supplies that they've really not been looking at at bigger purchases. And once the opportunity comes out, anybody who's been hankering for a, a new car they'll be back out there. And interest rates will be great. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that I did buy a hard good item at our Costco, you'll be glad to know, and it was patio furniture, because I'm visualizing a positive future and I want to be sitting out on my back patio. So the Naperville Costco got my business and got a wonderful patio set that I just, we just picked up yesterday. So there you go. So. <laughs> Uh, so from the downtown perspective, I'd say, um, uh, again, we're, we're eager. The businesses are ready. They're ready to welcome back customers and welcome back their associates, too. Um, things that the community can do now. You know, I even have a show and tell by downtown Naperville gift cards. That's <laughs> always a great thing. Um, and, you know, we're even we have different incentives through the month of April. Um, we have different things on our website, downtownnaperville.com. But. You know, if you have wedding gifts, graduation gifts, call these stores. They're they're fulfilling orders online. And so there's ways to help them now until we reopen early May. So, um, and I just want to say thank you again to NCTV for putting this together. You're a nonprofit too, and you're the voice of the community. And what you and your team do is wonderful for Naperville. So hats off to you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kaylin. Thank you, NCTV, and kind of echoing a little bit what Katie was saying is thanks to the community. Thanks to the community for still supporting our businesses, for still supporting our restaurants, and for doing things like liking a Facebook page or sharing some businesses' Facebook posts, uh, writing a review. There are many ways you can help businesses without that are closed without just spending money. And so thank you for continuing to spend money with our businesses, but supporting them and Seeing the community come together, rally around our business community has been truly wonderful. Um, Katie and I have been working on the Naperville Helps campaign, which has brought in almost $65,000 from community members. We're taking that money and investing that with our local restaurants. We're buying meals from our local restaurants and feeding more than 1,500 people each week. Um, at our healthcare workers, Naperville Fire, Naperville Police, Last week alone, we spent $13,000 at our Naperville restaurants, and that's thanks to the community's generosity. So I think the thing that will come out of, what is this called, the great lockdown or the great pause is the fact that we're all able to sit back and rally around what matters to us most, and that's community. It's supporting our businesses and appreciating the role the businesses have in supporting our community as well. So grateful to um, the people of, of Naperville and the whole area for supporting us. and. As the chamber, we hope to be seen as a team member of yours, and we hope that you come to us for resources, and it's our job to support you as businesses. So whether that's help with some of the federal stimulus money or how to get restarted, uh, hopefully May 1st, and what that looks like, we're here to support you uh, and can't wait to do that and get back to our new normal. Mayor? Yeah, well, thanks again, Liz. Uh, we do appreciate all you guys do. Um, 
this is a time that I, I can say that I'm just so proud of the community for the way they've responded. You know, I think Caitlin just uh, said it very well about the business community and how people have rallied around the business community, but neighbors have rallied around neighbors and, and families have taken care of friends and um, the not-for-profits have, have been, everybody's been trying to pitch in wherever they can. And it just makes me so proud to be, you know, a resident of this community that has um, rallied around each other to support each other and, and and help us all and just help everyone. You know, it reminds me of the uh, the great, I think they're the Redwood Forest in California. They, they These trees are like 2,000 years old. And the reason they have been able to withstand this, these centuries of life is that their root system mesh together and create this huge web underneath the soil. And so each tree supports the other tree. And it's, it's pretty much what our businesses and our not-for-profits and our, our residents have been doing. We're all supporting one another and and, and making us stronger by doing it. And so I'm really, really proud of our, our city right now. Well, thank you all for taking time to, to share your thoughts and, and help our community know where we are, what you think is gonna happen, because I think we're all thinking and our concern and looking to you to help us guide that. So thank you very much. And, and we hope to be open very soon. And, and we hope to get back together with you in different ways. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much.